Hello everybody, my name is Andy Ternay, and this is another video in my Patreon-sponsored series exploring the links between racists and the appropriation of Viking culture and Viking symbols to support their twisted ideology of white supremacy. Um, this video, we are going to be discussing Vikings, the Fierce Raiders! of the coast of Francia in England. And yeah, that's that's true. But that's just a tiny slice of the picture of who the Vikings were and what motivated them. So let's discuss that. Um the Vikings existed at the late European Iron Age, roughly 750 A.D. to 1100 A.D. There's, you know, a lot of discussion as to what those boundaries of the Viking Age are, but we'll just stick with that for a general outline. Now, who were the Vikings? Well, they were the Scandinavian peoples who were based in what we know today as Norway, Denmark, and Sweden. Although people back then would not have identified themselves as being Norwegian, Swedish, or Danish. If you could talk to someone from 750 AD, they would probably identify themselves first as a farmer, and probably secondly by tribe, the Sphere, the Gouts, the Danes, and that's how they would have seen themselves. They would have uh, defined their primarily, primary loyalties and obligations to community via family and family relationships. Um, they would have seen their local chieftain, the local who could round up warriors to support his legitimacy as being their local ruler and leader, and that person would have had the obligation to protect them from raids from other tribes and other local communities. Um, there were no cities then. Nowhere in the Scandinavian countries was there anything resembling a city. In fact, Burka in Sweden, with roughly a thousand people, was the largest community during the early part of the Viking era. So how did a bunch of farmers get this reputation as fierce, ruthless raiders and, and savvy traders who traveled the world? Because they did. The Vikings had very little in the way of a technological edge on their European neighbors. Um, their tools and weapons were, for the most part, iron. Um, sometimes they would have carbon steel welded to the edges to give them hardness. They were not superior to the weapons used by their neighbors or the tools used by their neighbors. In fact, throughout most of the Viking period, the Vikings had a strong desire to acquire the weapons made by the Franks in northern Germany. Um, the Vikings did have one thing, though, that their neighbors did not, and those were the Viking longships. The Viking longships were a technological innovation in that they had very shallow, wide bottoms unlike the rather deep bottoms that their neighbors used. This allowed the Viking ships to travel both on the ocean and inland on rivers that were too shallow for most of their opponents' ships. That gave them a huge advantage when they began raiding outside of Scandinavia. They were able to one day be raiding deep inland and the next day be many, many miles away on the coastland trading the items they'd raided to other members 
of the same tribe that they had been raiding. Um, the ships could also be propelled by either sail or propelled by oars. And this gave them a great deal of mobility that their opponents also lacked. These Viking ships were essential to defining the Viking Age because it allowed these tribes to expand from the territories they occupied outward. And where we see them go is simply amazing. No other Europeans did anything like what they did. They went into Russia as the Rus and created the very name Russia from their tribal names. They traveled down to the Byzant Byzantine Empire and they served in Byzantium as the elite um, Varangian guards who defended the emperor. And they went further and they went all the way to Baghdad and they got to experience the richness of the Islamic Caliphate at its height and walk the streets of this incredibly large metropolitan city that was dominated by Islam. They carved their runes in the Hagia Sophia in Turkey. They traveled all through Europe and they established permanent holdings in Normandy and almost permanent holdings in the British Isles. They expanded to the Faroe Islands, to Iceland, to Greenland, and then to Vinland, which we know as Canada, Newfoundland. They traveled so far as China and Africa. We have records of Vikings traveling vi Chinese rivers and fighting on African shores. This was truly amazing at this time period for this to take place. But it's also important to note that Vikings were actually a tiny minority of the population of the Viking countries. And what I mean by that is the word Vikings, Viking, would have meant something very different to those people. It was a profession. It was something you went and did. It meant raider or pirate. And it implied that you were leaving your home, going somewhere else. Now, at the start of the Viking period, that was often just your neighboring tribe. Um, you might cross the Baltic Sea and raid in Sweden if you were from Denmark. Um, you might go to Norway from Sweden to raid. But at the start of the Viking period, we're seeing them leave behind their native countries and starting to really strike in countries like France, known as Francia at the time, and at the Angles and Saxons in what was to become England. And these raids were frightening and terrifying and bloody, and they slaughtered and enslaved people. Why did they do this? Well, as we discussed, they didn't have any tribal or family ties. They had no loyalties or obligations to these people. Additionally, there was a barrier because the people they were raiding, at least in the West, were Christian, and they were heathen worshippers of the Norse gods, Othin, Freya, Thor. Another point about being a Viking, being a raider or a pirate, was that very few people did this as a lifelong career. This was usually something you did for a few years to gain prestige as a warrior and to hopefully come back with a couple of bags of silver, which will allow you to buy land so you could start your own farm or to enter the service of a powerful noble. And these would be things that young men would do to 
enhance their prestige and status in the Scandinavian community, in their tribal units. So the perceptions we have today of Vikings are prob probably not hugely accurate. Um, we, we tend not to think about farming as a major activity of Vikings, of the people that we think of as Vikings, uh, but it was. It was a central activity. Sewing linen was a massive enterprise. Uh, making sure that there was food and lumber and blacksmithing, all of these things were probably much more important activities than the raids in terms of daily life. We will pick up next time probably exploring the Viking religion a little bit and the Viking worldview. Thank you very much for your attention to this video. I appreciate the fact that you've taken the time to watch. I would invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can see future videos I produce and explore what I've done in the past. I also ask you that if you find these efforts interesting and worthy of support, that you visit my Patreon page and perhaps pledge a small amount each month so that I can continue to work on developing this information. Thank you very much for your time. Have a wonderful day.